Welcome to Mentally Stronger, the podcast where with every episode, we're learning practical ways to let go of stress and struggles, grow our mental strength, and live a happier, healthier, more meaningful life. I'm your host, Melly O'Brien, co-founder of Mindfulness.com and creator of mindfulness-based mental strength training. I'm so glad to have you with me. Let's dive in to today's episode. Hi, and welcome to the Mentally Stronger podcast. I'm making this episode for you in between outbreaks of storms. It's really stormy, tropical weather here in Byron Bay, Australia at this time of year. Most of the Northern Hemisphere is going into winter for Christmas and, uh, yeah, we're having kind of very um, tropical, torrential rainstorms. So just taking a moment in between outbreaks of rain to make this podcast. And today we're going to focus on the importance of being your own authority. This is really a topic that's very dear to my own heart and it's a key aspect of what mental strength training is really all about, developing a trust in yourself and your own wisdom. So this is really, an, as I said, an essential part of developing mental strength because you know, taking advice, teachings and guidance from others can absolutely help us learn and has very huge value in our lives. I've gained a lot uh, from that in my own life, but sometimes we can take this a little bit too far. And many of us can have a habit of always looking outside of ourselves for the answers instead of trusting what our own intuitions, instincts, and feelings are telling us. For instance, have you ever gone along with something that didn't really feel right out of fear of what other people might think if you spoke up? Have you ever done something that wasn't really quite authentic, maybe just to impress other people or fit in only to later regret it? These are examples of not really listening to and trusting our own kind of feelings, our own authority and letting something like fear get in the way. So there's a story about this that you might remember from your childhood, Hans Christian Andersen's The Emperor's New Clothes. This is a fairy tale about two con men who pretended to be weavers and they convinced the emperor that they had this magical fabric with which they could make him the finest suit in all of the lands. The magic of the fabric, they said, is that it can only be seen by those who are intelligent and brave. It appears invisible to everyone who is stupid and incompetent. So the emperor, who loves fine clothing, is really excited about this suit. So he pays the men a handsome sum to get the suit ready for an upcoming parade. After a week, the emperor sends men to go check on the weaver's work when each man realises that he can't see anything, though. He doesn't want to admit it because he doesn't want to appear stupid and incompetent. So each man lies to the emperor saying, oh, the suit is looking amazing. It's coming along beautifully. (laughs) Then the suit is brought to the emperor on the day of the parade. The emperor sees nothing, but he too did not want to be seen as stupid or incompetent. So he agrees the suit is wonderful and he goes to put it on. The emperor then goes into town onto this royal parade on the front of a big public float and parades through the entire kingdom with no clothes on. Now, everyone in the kingdom sees the emperor with no clothes on, but for fear of being accused of being stupid or incompetent, they all speak to each other about how magnificent the emperor looks. I've never seen him so handsome. What a beautiful suit. Finally, a child yells out, The emperor isn't wearing any clothes. (laughs) Then everybody realizes what's actually true. Everyone starts giggling and then everybody starts exclaiming together, the emperor has no clothes, the emperor has no clothes. And the poor emperor then found himself standing in the middle of the parade wearing nothing but his pride. (laughs) So we can all relate to this kind of charming story, right? Because we all share a really common challenge. Human beings are 
tribal creatures. The way our minds evolved means that we will always feel a strong pull to fit in and be part of the pack. We, we feel drawn to conform rather than risk rejection. But this internal pressure to conform means that we can sometimes deny our own feelings instead of listening to them. It means we might hold off on challenging the status quo even when something absolutely doesn't feel right to us. Sometimes we might make decisions, take actions with little reason other than the fact that everybody else is doing it. Right? It's also worth noting that some people exploring a personal growth path or a spiritual path get caught up in believing that a particular teacher or leader knows better than them. They idolize them then and just do whatever they say without question. But this way of giving away our own authority has led many people down really unhelpful and unhealthy paths. So if at any time something doesn't feel right to you, the invitation is like, why not listen to and honor your own feelings? Why should you ever ignore those feelings if some authority figure or group of people think differently? This capacity for trusting yourself and honoring your feelings is the foundation of basic wisdom, right? So for many of us, it can be a habit to ignore instead of honoring our feelings, but emotions and sensations can be like guides and the body has its own wisdom. For instance, when we've been working too long, the body gets tired or overly revved. If we honor those feelings, they can teach us to take rest, right? A feeling of sadness about the state of the world today when felt and fully honored can be a powerful motivator to take compassionate action for positive change. And sometimes in life it happens that other people treat us in ways that maybe is fine for a lot of other people, but it doesn't feel right for us. If we honor that feeling, we can take action to look after our own needs and boundaries and our own bodies and beings in positive ways, right? So wisdom grows the more you listen to your feelings, intuitions, and sensations with an open-heartedness and take action if needed. This week's invitation is to practice listening to and trusting your own feelings and your own being as the ultimate source of authority in your life. And I'd like to uh, finish off today with a, um, a passage by author and artist Leonig. He says, there is a voice inside of you that whispers all day long. I feel that this is right for me and I know that this is wrong. No teacher, preacher, parent, friend, or wise man can decide what's right for you. Just listen to that voice that speaks inside. If you found this video helpful, you can subscribe to this channel by hitting the subscribe button below. And if you know someone who you think might benefit from listening to this episode, share it with them. Sharing it could really help them feel better and improve the quality of their life. And if you'd like some more in-depth support on becoming mentally stronger, come and check out the coaching and training options that I offer on my website. Thanks for listening. Take care and stay strong. If you know someone who you think might benefit from listening to this episode, share it with them. Sharing it could really help them to feel better and improve the quality of their life. And if you found this episode helpful, remember to subscribe to the podcast so that you can receive more tips on growing your mental strength. And if you'd like some more support in becoming mentally strong, come over to the website and check out the different coaching and training options I have on offer there for you. You can find the links for all of that in the show notes. And thanks again for tuning in. Take care and stay strong. Stay strong.